What is up, everybody? Logan here again with another video today. I did get a haircut since the last one, so I may look a little different, but we're going to get into uh, this trading video, and it's going to kind of encapsulate what I went over in the last one, which was, you know, the SPX credit spreads, my win rate. I do want to take a hot second, though, to say I appreciate all the support. We're almost at 10,750 subs. You guys can see my ad revenue here. Uh, this year, it's been lower. YouTube just pays lower during a recession time. And also I haven't been uploading as much because we've just been trading so much. And there's a lot of time and effort that goes into a lot of things. So, you know, mentally, sometimes you just have to disconnect, but I do appreciate the support. And if you guys would leave a subscribe right now, a comment below and a like, um, please comment. Let's find another fun emoji. Do the apple emoji, like the little red or green apple. I think it's red. Uh, comment that apple below uh, if you if you want to support the channel for the algorithm. So I really appreciate it. And let's get right into this one. Let's go to the checklist. As of now, I'm 61 for 63. We will go through a lot of this again. And I'll show you guys a trade we took today in the Discord, um, why we took it, the timing. We were test, not tested, but like, you know, we took the trade 45, 50 credit. It did get all the way to 70 credit at one point. And then from that point on, we were able to take it off for a five to 10 cent debit. Uh, so really nice win there. You could have let it expire if you wanted to as well, but we're going to take a deep dive into um, the discord real quick, show you guys a strike. So we took the 35, 35, 25, sorry, 35, 30, 35, 25 for 40 credit. I filled some for 45, many people filled 45, 50, like we had a nice 10 point sell off almost immediately after the call out. And then I also did this little thing here, um, why I won't trade zero DT tomorrow, it is FOMC day. And I just think the volatility is gonna be so high as you guys could see on that first chart, the EM info, um, 51 point expected move for tomorrow. So it's all about just being consistent with trading. I just wanted to get, it doesn't matter what your account size is. It just comes down to what you're doing with it um, because everybody starts at a different spot. I just wanted to say that real quick. It's all about your consistency. But in the main options chat, um, Go Blue has been sharing the EM info. He's been charting this every day and it helps us out. So you guys can see we're using this criteria as another thing for us, you know, to put in that sheet of, hey, why are we in this trade? What are we doing here? And it shows, you know, the 1% up and down, the expected move where we close. This does include the decimals as well um, with what the expected move is. And then it shows whatever possible, you know, credit entries, right? So this is what helped me today decide the 3530 was it was a combination of being just over 2% down on the day, which is very uncommon. Not uncommon this year, but just in general. Like on average, we stick within a 1% move on the day. We talked about that a lot in the last video. Um, and then just knowing that at that point, you know, we're roughly two times outside the expected move, but not quite. Uh, but with the combination of the 2% move and almost two times down, you know, I felt very comfortable there because the market was already pushing down to test this EM low. And that's actually right around where we did find traction and bounce all the way back up because this is how the market makers trade the market, right? And now that zero DTE is every single day, you know, people got to cover positions every day now. That's why this volatility during power hour has been so different than it has been for a long, long time because a lot of these big S&P 500 traders now have expirations every day. So he's been posting that. This helped me make my decision on the strikes, of course, and that goes with our zero DT checklist, right? Expected move math. That's the number one thing. And if you're brand new to that, I'll pull up the whiteboard in a little bit. We can go deep in depth with it, and I will show you guys exactly what we mean by that. But, you know, it is right here, basically just saying this is for tomorrow. Um, I know we're kind of jumping all over the place, but the last close, right? This is where we close 3588 today. Take the 51 because it's plus or minus. That will show you the expected move low for tomorrow. This is the high, and this would be two times the low, two times the high. So if you do see a move like, boom, we hit the EM low right off the morning, we're down to 3537. You could then look at, you know, possibly making your short leg two times away from the expected move low. 
that's a pretty solid spot to be in because I think we've only exceeded this. And that's my next thing. I want to do the math and see how many times we've exceeded two times the expected move, but it's got to be less than like six or seven times this whole year, because that's what we're going to do is we're going to stay within that expected move. This is how the market makers trade the markets. And then when you see that we break out of it aggressively, you may see heavy selling, but that's when you use your internal indicators like the advanced decline and uh, you know the tick charts, all of that to help you see where is volume moving or is there buying pressure, is there selling pressure? So this is for tomorrow. This is what we're gonna use. I'm probably not gonna trade tomorrow though, but this is just important to practice with because I don't like to trade FOMC. The volatility does not get sucked out until after the event. And it's just like, I don't want to sit there all day with a chop and, you know, a ranging day. And then all of a sudden we have a big reaction and then it goes the other way and then it reacts the other way again or whatever based on what is said, what is done. So this is the expected move for tomorrow. Percentages to look for possible entries if you're someone who does want to trade but this is also available to anybody in the discord. If you guys do want to come join below. And then if you guys do, you know, if you're like, Oh, I don't want to pay month to month, Logan, like I will discount you. Of course, if you guys sign up for six months to 12 months, I talked about that in the main chat a little bit ago. Um, if that's something you'd be interested in, if we go to the announcements tab right here, uh, if you, pay month to month. I do run discounts three months, six months a year if you pay ahead of time. So just message me on Instagram. My link is below to that or my username. Um, you guys can get in contact with me there and then we can set something up for you. So back to the main options chat. That was kind of what we were using today, right? And then that was my decision making was just this two times expected move low. I justified an 8% return. I let this run to expiration today. Totally good. Some people who got in at 50, took it off at 10, still collected 40 credit. And it's all about that consistency, right? Like I shoot for 40 to 50 credit per trade. Um, and with my win rate and my two losses being 3x credit stops. So it's just three times that I got in the trade for. That was when I was like, okay, you know, I'm doing good here. Let's keep this win rate high and then manage the losers when they come. So back to the zero DT checklist. That's that expected move math. Today, we did not have a gap up or a gap down. We just opened and then the market sold. Uh, well, I guess there was a little bit of a gap down right at the morning, but we did end up going to fill that um, back up to, is there a gap down? I, I'll have to pull up the charts. Um, so yeah, we'll pull up the TOS chart so I can also show you guys uh, more support that I was looking at while using the EM move. So let's hop right over to those charts right now. Now, if you're completely new to the channel, this is your first video, I go over this 10 day, 30 minute chart over and over and over. So we're going to maximize the sell really quickly here. Um, but as you guys can see, we had a boatload of resistance above two. And we immediately started selling once we hit that. So that would have been another great opportunity. The only reason I didn't put a condor on today was because of this false breakout, but we also had that false breakdown candle. So even though I did see us breaking above this, I knew better that after you see a big run from 35.68 all the way to 36.40, generally you cool down, right? Like Generally, with the market staying within a 1% move every day, you're going to cool down even when you get a big run like that. What is that? 70 points in, what was that? Three hours, two and a half hours. Still, even with the volatility this high, I truly think, yeah, it would have been a nice spot to condor for sure. Um, I just, just in case we broke out, right? Bottoming, we're bottoming a little bit out here. So, especially with these couple of bounces, these nice candle wicks at the end of the day. So that's just something that I came into. I noticed, hey, we do have this little gap down here. Let's see if we can fill the gap. The moving averages are above and we don't like to stay too far from the moving averages. So once we hit around that EM low, that's when it was such a spot on time to take a trade. Wrote it all the way up. A lot of people closed out around here and you could have still ridden out and been fine because if I could even, I don't even think I could go that low. Yeah, we were like way, way down here, right? So we'd have to continue to see selling. And then if we zoom out a little bit more, um, you guys could see the advanced decline 
was pretty stable throughout most of the day anyway. So even this morning, it was nothing insane. There was no minus 2000 on the ADD. So all is well. And even the volatility index or the VIX over here, pretty, pretty choppy, but growing day. Of course, the VIX is going to go up towards the end of the day because we have the events coming up this week, CPI, for example. Um, and I honestly didn't look at the tick charts too much after we put the trade on because the volatility, of course, is going to start to ramp up the Tuesday before FOMC. Um, but that was how I use these charts. And then if you guys want to look at my other charts, I do like to use this 15 day, 10 minute quite a bit. Um, I find this very helpful for day trading because it does kind of give you this range of like, okay, here's the mean over the last 15 days on the 10 minute chart. You get a lot of gap ups, gap down. You know, if we're up here in the nosebleeds, it's probably a good shot. We're going to turn around, boom, then we gap down. And this, you know, this gap's still open right now, but also it was pretty much the same gap from last time. So I'm really curious where we do head from here. I would say all signs kind of point up right now. And even though we're under the moving averages, the reason I say that is just because the mean is back here at 36.32. So not a bad time to be a little bit contrarian, but it is going to come down to FOMC and CPI. So I wouldn't be putting any big positions on right now just because the volatility is so high and we're just kind of slowly chopping down right now. Um, so that was what I used to make these trades today. Super simple, straightforward. Just did some math with the Discord, chatted, looked over the expected move, which we'll hop back to real quick. Checked for that gap up or gap down. How is the VIX doing? Of course, we expected it to rise throughout the day, which it did. Um, did we exceed the expected move yesterday? No, we did not, if I can remember correctly. I know we won the trade. <laughs> I'm trying to remember back that far. Showed you guys the chart. The sizing, it's interesting because I always size smaller on big news weeks. Personally, I don't like to exceed 4 to 5% of my account at risk when it comes to big, big news weeks because what's the point, right? Like anything bad could happen, anything good, and immediately you're getting tested and it's easy to get upset because there's a lot of irrational movements. We went over the timing. We basically hit it at the bottom today. Very, very exciting. Showed you why I chose my strikes. So as you guys can see, here is our CCS possible short legs. And we ran pretty close to that, right? Like the EM high, I think we got up to 3641. So we weren't too far off, but we stayed right in between the expected move on the top and the bottom, um, which you can throw in your charts too. You can just manually wake up and then click this at the level and then do one above it. And like I said, right around that 2X EM low. Um, also, while we were at support at that EM low, so I figured, you know, if we're going to go fill this gap to the upside, let's put a PCS on today. It paid off. And then, of course, it would have been smart to put a condor on today, but volatility, I like to just be on one side during big news weeks. Is that a flaw in my trading? It could be. Um, but as of now, I'd rather just wait for the vanilla days. And, uh, you know, nice when there's volatility because you can get really far away, still feel comfortable. So hope that helps you guys out in this video. A little quick, you know, pretty quick one. Um, risk management. I think we, you know, we went down, what, 20, 30 bucks or something um, off the initial entry. And of course, that's going to happen. Most trades you get into are losing trades when you first fill them, especially when you're doing credit spreads. Uh, if you could even find somebody who 50% of the time starts winning a trade after they put it on, I'd like to meet them because I can't do that. I don't know very many people. And that's part of setting your expectations, right? Like expect a trade to be upside down at some point when you're trading because like you can't be perfect. Even if you have the perfect setup, you're going to get a bad fill. And you just, most importantly, you just don't want to miss your fills when you have a good setup. So it's just important to be really level-headed when you're trading and like stay humble, size properly, because we have so much time to make money. Like I'm, I'm 22. Um, I'm halfway to be in 23. Super, super laid back about this stuff because it's like, what if you did get all the money in the world tomorrow? Like, what would you do with it? Right. So just be very patient with the setups, be very patient with the risk management on these like I said, rolling is a very popular way for me to manage, but at the same time, you have to be wary of, you know, what's the news that's coming up? What do we have on the clock? 
for the market this week because that could really impact the moves. And, you know, you don't want to roll something to Friday from today and it was at the money and then we dropped 3% from here, right? So you got to be very mindful of where you're at on deciding when to stop out. So I hope this helps you guys out. We do take the expected move from the previous day's close that we trade with that next day. Um, and I went over that chart and I'm just super excited to be 61 for 63. I'm still filling out the spreadsheet that has all of the trades logged because for a hot minute, I wasn't logging everything. So I was just talking back and forth with Halcyon about it. So I just got to dig all the way back, finish the template because Google Sheets takes forever for me for whatever reason. But that's going to be everything for me in this video. If you guys have yet to leave a like on it, please do that. I appreciate all the support as always. You guys know it means a bunch to me. And make sure you guys do subscribe too if this if you find a lot of value. We're almost at 10,750 subs, like I said earlier. So what, like 10 people away. So click the sub button. Let's get this channel to 11K and let's keep crushing this market. I will see you guys in the next video.